All right, guys, I gotta go to the parts store today. So let's go for a drive. The Red Integra. Ah, nice and clean. Man, it is hot. Get this very going. Talk to you for a second. Hell, no air. No way. Seriously? Whoa. Really? Just three and four? Uh. If you own a 90s Honda and Acura, you're pretty familiar with this problem. No number one or number two speed for your fan. Sometimes no number three speed, but definitely a number four. So that can be really inconvenient to you and your passengers and also very embarrassing. So today we're going to fix this problem and get all our speeds back and have nice, smooth, cool air. All right, let's fix this thing. Okay, guys, so we're in the car and this is the resistor I was talking about. Uh, I got this from my local auto parts store. You can get this from anywhere. Actually, I think I got this from Amazon, to be honest with you. I don't know, the, the manufacturer Wells, haven't heard of them, but I'm sure they're known. They actually make parts. But this was from Amazon, this is the resistor. Give you a good idea what it looks like. And that's what it looks like. It looks like some icing on this little sensor. And there's a plug in the back. So, as you can see, there's three resistors. They're all different length and different sizes. And that's the whole point. The point of a resistor is to restrict the flow of current towards a circuit. Uh, in this case, we have the fan down here and the fan completes the circuit. The fan is going to get electricity and as it gets electricity, it's going to spin. And now all this does is as you select level one, two, three, or four, this lets the current go through one of these three resistors right here. So for example, you might have the longest one uh, with the most resistance for fan speed number one and that's going to restrict the current going towards the fan and therefore making it spin slower. Uh, less resistance would be number two, and then even less resistance would be number three right here. So it would actually flow more current, letting the fan spin a lot faster. And you're wondering, this is a four-speed uh, switch here. Where's the fourth resistor? In this case, uh, the fourth speed has no resistance. It's just going to get continuous current towards the motor, and then that's going to run at its normal design speed. So uh, usually what happens you have these resistors actually crack due to old age being brittle and sometimes they don't have any uh, continuity therefore not allowing the current or electricity to flow to the motor hence why switch one and two doesn't work. So we're gonna go in there take a look at it and see what we can find. So right now uh, this is my first time doing this repair so I have my toolbox. There's a multitude of tools in here. I think I'll be using pretty much just a socket and a wrench, maybe an extender. But for the most part, I'll be using, I think, uh, a 10 or 12 millimeter socket, which is very common with the Hondas and the Acura. So that's what we'll do. Take this whole glove box apart and then find where this resistor is living. So let's start doing this. Okay, so we're about to begin this. Uh, the first thing you'll need to do is remove all the contents from your glove box. Luckily this one isn't too, too filled with stuff in here. And I put this back here. All right. While we have this open, the next step is to remove this little screw here. There's a little Phillips screwdriver screw that goes into this uh, shock absorption type deal right here. And all this does is a shock absorber or a dampener to dampen the throws of this glove box. Usually luxury car manufacturers will install this so that the uh, glove box doesn't just fall down. In this case, this one is it's still damped a little bit. It's not as, as free falling, but it's pretty old. So that's connected to the actual car, the chassis, and you want to remove that. That's going to be a hindrance in the future if you don't get it out now. So I'm going to just unscrew this. Screw here, and boom, just a regular screw. Here's your damper, and 
pulled it out, and now it's not dampened at all. So you can see how fast it just drops down. So it does work. All right, so once you get that removed, you wanna close this, reclose the glove box. And the only thing that's holding this right now are two bolts underneath right here. So I have my little flashlight here, or in other countries, it's called a torch. Uh, but I got my flashlight here, I'm gonna go into here and remove these two bolts on there with my eight millimeter socket. So hopefully I'm not in the way here. Got my flashlight here. And I'm gonna go a little close here. All right, here we go. All right, I'm just gonna loosen it up a little bit initially. All right, they're both loose now. So I'm just gonna unscrew the rest with my fingers. And all that does is hold the actual pivot point for your glove box. We'll go back up here. I'll do it by hand. It is hot. All right, boom. And you can see that the glove box kind of fell down a little bit. And now, once I open this glove box, it should pretty much just fall out, fall down. Boom, falls out, and this is your glove box. I can put this to the side. Put that there for later. There's your damper that I talked about earlier. Pretty cool. All right, time to get in here and look for this resistor. All right, so that's removed. Let's go in here and take a look at what we find. Makes it better. You have this little brace that goes across, and I thought I'd have to remove that, but you really don't. If you go lower down, so I'll dip the camera down a little bit lower, you get a better idea of what we're looking at. So what we need to remove is this right here. So hopefully you can see that. That's that brown plug that goes into that black base. And all you have down there are two screws, two Phillip screws. Go a little high as possible. One to the left, one to the right. And that is your resistor. So the only problem I see here is this harness right here. That's probably gonna be in the way. Hopefully I can get some leverage to get those screws out. So that's it right there. Okay, so let's uh, get the Phillips screwdriver and get that out, or try to get it out. So um, if you haven't already, disconnect your battery, your negative terminal for your battery so that you don't get electrocuted. So that's the first thing you wanna do once you get in here. Uh, but there's a little plug right here. I'm just gonna squeeze this and pull the plug straight up, this brown plug. There it is. Four plugs, just like the actual sensor. And besides that, I would like to, well, I can't, this is stuck in here, so I can't really remove this harness by any means. And I don't wanna break this cable tie anyhow. So I'm gonna go in here and try to remove those two screws that I showed you earlier. There is some space in here for a pretty long screwdriver, so I'm gonna try my best to do that, and hopefully it works. So I'm gonna reverse it through here, and try to angle. So this is the hardest part of this whole thing. All right, so let's see if I can get some turn. You know what, it's actually turning. Since I'm here, I'm just gonna slide this over to the, oh, I can't do that. I gotta pull it back out. Let's see if I can get this first screw out. Here's the first one. So that only means that this other one is gonna be a pain in the butt because things never work this easily, this smoothly. Uh, can I see it? Oh, this one's gonna be a pain in the butt. Two hours later. Okay, I may have found a smaller driver. Uh, let's see if that one works. Okay. Yep. 
There's a little bit more space in here for me. All right. Woo-wee! And here's the second screw. All right, so that's there. Let's take a look at this. Here's what we're dealing with here. That's situated. Here's your harness plug right here. And I just took off the two screws off here, one here and one over here. So all I have to do is just lift this up and see what it looks like. So let's do that together. See what it looks like. Hopefully I don't damage anything. I mean, it's already broken, but. Boom, pull that out, and there you go. And that's what's defective. So I took it out this way, so the end, the tapered end right here, goes towards the driver. So make sure I don't reverse it. All right, so let's just compare this with the new one and see if it matches up. So here is my new one right here. And here's the old one. Let's flip that upside down. And it looks it looks close enough. Fairly similar. Three loops. And that's it. I'm just gonna inspect it some more. And then just go ahead and put it back in. Looks pretty similar. So there it is. Here's your little hole for it. I'm gonna try to put this back in here. Drop that in there, boom. Falls in place. Okay, let's see if this is gonna work. I'm gonna put this in by hand first, and then see if the small screwdriver can finish the rest. Cool, they're both in. I think it should be easier now with the smaller screwdriver. So the key here is having the right tools for the job. In this case is the, hopefully you have the right size screwdriver. That one's in pretty good. Let's try the other side, the hard side, harder side. All right, I think that's in there too. That's in there pretty secure actually. Okay, so I'm gonna just plug this harness back in here. It's already in there. Line this up. There it is. All right, it's in place, it's clipped. And that's it, hopefully it works. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reconnect my battery and actually see if the fan works before I reinstall the glove box. Okay, so we're back in the car, I'm on the passenger side still. The battery is reconnected and let's try it. I have it off, completely off here. Put the key in. And let's try it. First level one. Ah. Hopefully, you can hear that. <laughs> you can hear the motor down there. It's purring. Let's go to level two. That works too. Let's try level three. Oh yeah, you can definitely feel that. And then the fourth one should work because technically there's no resistance to level four. But let's try it anyhow. All right. We are in good shape here. Level one works. I can put my AC on, you should hear the fan. All right, so that is repaired. And all we have to do now is just put the glove box back in here and seal it up. Let's do that. Those two bolts are in here. They're torqued down. 
All I need now is my screwdriver. Reinstall this damper back in here. There it is, back in the hole. And use my screwdriver to keep it in place. Boom, lightly dampened, <laughs> not much, but it's closed, open, closed. I'm happy with that. She is done. That's how you fix this problem, and uh, hopefully uh, this won't need to be changed again for another 20 years. All right guys, that's it for today. If you guys enjoyed this video, thought it was beneficial, hey, hit the like button, leave a comment, and if you could, Please consider subscribing to this channel, it goes a long way. Until next time, peace. Crap, I'm gonna stop this girl, but look at all this production. I got lights in the car, I got lights outside the car. I mean, whoopsie, all to make this look. <laughs> partially decent. I actually washed like a quarter of the car. Like I washed the side panel, I washed the window, I washed this window, cleaned the seat. <laughs>